assembly chamber here. Um, but before we do, um, I want to show you guys, this is what I call kind of the assembly wall of fame here. Um, it has all of our former speakers of the assembly as well as our current one, Anthony Rendon here. His office is just below us. Um, and here, the most recent of the former speakers, that's Tony Atkins. Uh, we were just outside her office, one floor below. And again, she's the only woman in our state's history uh, to serve as both leaders of, the ha of our legislative houses there. Um, again, kind of an important figure. So, um, come this way. style chairs on the left hand side please. between the two chambers? The color. Mm -hmm. The color, there you go. Um, in the Senate, it's, everything's red. Here it's green. Um, that goes all the way back to 17th century English Parliament, um, where they modeled a bicameral legislature or a two-house legislature. Um, in Parliament, they have their upper house, which they call the House of Lords, and their colors are red. They have their lower house, which they call their House of Commons, and the colors for that are green. Um, so we, again, borrowed that model for a bicameral legislature, uh, and we also borrowed their colors. Um, but this is sor sort of where one half of the legislative process happens here in California. Um, now where we're sitting, this is the public viewing gallery. Um, it is actually written in our state's constitution that while they are in session down below, the doors for these galleries must remain open and available to the public. Nice. Yeah. These are our elected officials down yep. below, and therefore we have every right to watch them as they conduct their work and read measures and pass and vote on legislation. Um, oftentimes there will be a sergeant at arms posted outside as well as up here uh, in the gallery, making sure that people are in their seats, they're remaining quiet, right. no one's leaning over the rails, no flash photography. Um, but again, they are open and available. I recommend that everybody come and check out a session if they have the time. Yes, sir. Is there a separate press area or is this press? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so actually, it's actually where most of the press sits is just below us. Okay. Um, it's hard to see from where we're at here, but yeah, directly below us. Um, and on that note, all sessions are streamed either online um, or you can often find them on public access networks or things like that. So if you can't be here physically, you can still um, watch. Um, now. The other difference between the two houses, that I again apologize we don't get to see, um, is the size difference. Um, there are 80 desks down below for 80 assembly members here in California. In the Senate, there's half as many. They have 40 state senators, um, so there are only 40 desks. California's population is just under 40 million. There's actually more people in our state than the entire country of Canada. Um, so per district, uh, each assembly member represents about 500,000 people. Uh, in the Senate, it's about a million people per district. Um, and this is where legislation is read and voted on. Now, most policy measures uh, are read three times, and after the third reading, on the floor of either chamber, they go to final vote. Most measures require what's called a simple majority uh, to pass on to the next phase of the legislative process. Um, a simple majority is just one more than half of the votes. So uh, here in the assembly, they would need 41 votes. In the Senate, they need 21 votes. Um, it then moves from the originating house, a piece of legislation, if it passes with that simple majority, it moves on to the opposing house. So the bill can start in either house. The third phase of the legislative process, when a bill is passed in both houses, um, is to move on to the desk of the governor. Now in California, uh, our governor actually has three options for a measure that comes across the desk. The first option for California governor is, of course, to sign on that piece of legislation. Uh, at that point, most bills are enacted as laws January 1st, the following year. There are some special 
Do you know how much the chandeliers like cost? How much they cost? No, but uh, I do have a story about the chandeliers. Remind me, don't don't let me leave the room without telling you guys about that. There's kind of a funny story about the chandeliers here. Um, but I will tell you a little bit about some of what we're seeing down below. So all of the desks here in the Assembly and in the Senate um, are hand carved, and they are each 150 years old. Um, I mentioned at the beginning of the tour that these chambers have been in use since 1869. These, every single one of these desks um, was part of that first 1869 legislature that happened during the Bill of Rights. Was it always Asian representatives or other representatives? Uh, no, not always. Uh, I would have to look up when exactly they, they changed it or when they, they solidified those numbers, um, but no, it was not always that, that many. Uh, now, uh, those desks are made from real walnut, and the individual who made each one of those desks was a German immigrant from who came to California during the gold rush. His name was Johann Gruner. Um, and he was paid by our state legislature anywhere from 12 to $14 per desk. And that was in the 1860s. By today's numbers, that would be about $250 per desk. Um, $250 per desk at 120 desks, it's about $30,000. Um, I don't know what the figures would be in 1869, but by 2019's numbers, it's not a bad chunk of change. In 1935, here in the assembly only, they had these electronic voting buttons installed on each one of the desks. And you can see those in the upper right-hand corner. Okay. You see the two long screens on both sides of the dais down there? Um, when they are voting on a piece of legislation, every single assembly member's name appears on those screens, just like they are now. And you can actually see in real time whether or not a measure passes or a bill passes um, based on how they're voting down below. So a green dot next to their name for a yes vote, and red dot for a no vote. Um, in the Senate, they do things a little bit differently. They don't have the electronic voting buttons in the Senate because there's half as many of them. They still do the traditional roll call voting. So one of the clerks seated at these long desks down below um, will read off each senator's name, and they respond with either an aye or a no vote. So they do things a little bit differently. I have a, I have a question about the the motto legis, legislatorum. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. What's that mean? Okay, so that motto. First of all, that motto is written in real twenty-four karat leaf, gold leaf. Um, <laughs> it is the only example of real gold in this chamber. Uh, there's actually two examples of real gold in the Senate. Uh, there is a seal that's wood carved in the Senate, and it has it's plated in real gold. Um, and then the Senate's official motto is also written in real gold. That one translates to. Does anybody read Latin? I don't know that word. Uh, but I do know that it translates to, it is the duty of the legislature to pass just laws. It is the duty of the legislature to pass just laws. There you go. Um, nice. Prior to that portrait of Abraham Lincoln being in this chamber, we had a portrait of John Sutter. John Sutter was an early Sacramento pioneer. He 
established Sutter's Fort not too far from here, and he also wow. owned a sawmill where gold was discovered in 1848. Um, but in 1909, they took Sutter's portrait down from the chamber and they put up Abraham Lincoln up there. Um, was there any specific? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Why? The reason yeah. Uh, is that John Sutter was not very recognizable to visitors of the building. Okay. Uh, people would come here, they would oftentimes go into the Senate, they would look up and see the portrait of Washington, a pretty recognizable individual. They would come into this chamber, um, and they would see a portrait of a man they could not identify. Um, so in the early 1900s, we had removed the Sutter portrait, and the Lincoln portrait has been here ever since. Um, the reason for Lincoln is that in 1862, Lincoln signed the Pacific Railway Act, which brought the Transcontinental Railroad as far west um, into California, and actually for a period of time, the only stop of that Transcontinental Railroad here in California um, was right here in Sacramento. If you've been to Old Sacramento, or more specifically, the Railroad Museum in Old Sacramento, um, where the Railroad Museum is, is pretty much the exact location uh, of the only stop of the Transcontinental Railroad in California. It's important for our state, especially as California emerged as an agricultural state. It was how we were able to ship goods, crops, and other things out of our state. It is the duty of the legislature to pass just laws.